Now here's a story. Indian manufactured autos shipped to a brand new Chinese built port in Sri Lanka where they're picked up by a bulk carrier destination Algeria. The deep sea port constructed and largely financed by the Chinese at a cost of $1.5 billion straddles a major east-west shipping route used by 200 to 300 international vessels daily. Sri Lankan officials say China has agreed to build a second port in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo and Chinese firms have pledged investments amounting to $50 billion spread over the next decade or so. And this is only part of the story, for China has built or is building a whole range of ports on the rim of the Indian Ocean. Welcome to Agenda, I'm Colin Chapman. And joining me to discuss this is Stratfor's Chief Analyst, Robert Kaplan. Bob, first tell me more about this new port. Hamban Tota Port on the southern tip of Sri Lanka, which in turn is an island, a sort of a teardrop hanging off the, uh, uh, the bottom of the Indian subcontinent. At this southern tip, the Chinese built a massive port project and the port finally opened um, a few days ago. Now, I have visited this port. Um, it is just massive. I was there in the early stages of building, and I can say that it's a great age in history to be a Chinese civil engineer because they are really building things. The way the United States built things during the 1930s with the Grand Coulee Dam and the Hoover Dam and the interstate highway system in the 1950s. Uh, the Chinese have been building massive state-of-the-art ports and harbors in Sri Lanka, off Myanmar, in Gwadar, in Pakistan, They've been involved in upgrading port projects in Chittagong in Bangladesh, in Lamu in northern Kenya. What unites all of these places is they're all in the Indian Ocean. They're all where the Afro-Asian continent meets the Indian Ocean. So that China eventually, through building these ports, will have access, commercial maritime access, along the whole, uh, the whole route that brings energy, oil and natural gas, from the Middle East all the way to Asia, because the Indian Ocean is sort of the world's energy interstate. And China will have a, 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 a maritime presence, perhaps even a naval presence in some distant morrow, so that the opening of this port in southern Sri Lanka is of of, of real geopolitical significance. Are there any agreements for China's military use of any of these ports, or has there been any indication this actually might happen? Technically, no. So far, they're designed solely for trade. But keep this in mind. In all these countries, or most of them, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Sri Lanka, the Chinese have given significant amounts of military aid and economic aid, as well as building these ports. In other words, tying these regimes closer to China. Um, the hope is that China eventually will have very close relations with these countries, will have port projects that it's built so that its burgeoning navy can make regular port visits to all of these countries, and the, the Chinese will also be able to use these ports as maritime commercial throughput facilities so that they can warehouse consumer goods for sale in Europe, in Africa, um, in other places. The Chinese, I should say, have also been developing ports in Piraeus and Greece in Rijeka, in Croatia. This is in the Eastern Mediterranean. So we're seeing the very early stages of sort of the 21st century equivalent of 19th century British coaling stations that will give China a two ocean presence, the Western Pacific plus the Indian Ocean and part of the Eastern Mediterranean. So that, you know, this is how empires have always begun in history. Right. Now, is the infrastructure, good roads and rail, linking these South Asian ports to China? 
Um, it's a mixed bag. Um, there's very little infrastructure in Gwadar and Pakistan. There is a road, a, you know, a modern road that connects Gwadar all the way along the Arabian Sea um, to Karachi. Um, but there is no serviceable, safe road that, that you can take from Gwadar north inland um, all the way up to the border with Western China. That will have to wait until Pakistan and Afghanistan themselves are politically stabilized, if they ever are. Um, in Sri Lanka is a relatively small island, and there is an infrastructure being built connecting Hambantota with Colombo. Um, when it comes to Myanmar, yes, the Chinese are building roads and rails to connect uh, Kayuk Fru, the Chinese-built port, with Yunnan province in southern China. China hopes to transport natural gas from the Bay of Bengal um, across uh, Myanmar in, into Yunnan province, there, thereby avoiding the congested Strait of Malacca. Um, the Strait of Malacca is really a problem for China because it's narrow. 80% of China's crude oil imports come through the Strait of Malacca. The Chinese leadership would like to diversify that. It would like to be less dependent on the Strait of Malacca, and that's where some of these port and road and rail projects are going. Uh, just to sum up, I would say that Sri Lanka and Myanmar are now. Gwadar is for the middle or distant future. Um, and and and. Bangladesh and Kenya are for sort of the near middle future. Robert Kaplan, chief analyst of Stratfor and author of a book about the importance of the Indian Ocean, Monsoon. That's agenda for this week. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now.